Big Bark Roll, Winter Bark. Okay, the whole roll was 15 feet, so I cut it in half at 7 feet 6 inches. So I'm going to have 7 feet 6 inches on each side of winter bark to start with. The difference between winter bark and summer bark is that uh, the winter bark has been harvested before, before the leaves on the tree come out. So there is that cambium uh, layer on it. Um, that you can scratch designs off of. Okay, so I laid down both barks in here while both panels and then uh, actually cut them the exact same length and then I measured the exact center and did a little mark so I can put that right in the center of my building frame so it'll equalize on each side and they'll both be the same. I'm kind of getting better, kind of getting better. The more canoes you make, the more little tricks you find. And uh, so I'm going to throw it back in and then that side I got it set up with uh, sideboards, so little boards to kind of hold hold it in, but I'll show you once I'm done and it's all in position, ready for sewing. Alright, I got the winter bark side panels in place, holding them in with these uh, these uh, old ribs, or new ribs, I just didn't use them yet. So pre-made ribs have two, two uses, so they're just kind of jammed at the bottom there, and held up by either a rope, a zip tie, or a root, in this matter some ropes and some zip ties in this case and then I did the same thing on that side they're, they're just basically temporarily in place so my bark can stay there take its shape without curling and then I'm gonna start stitching probably tomorrow I'm gonna do my stitching all along the bottom here to make the two pieces of bark mold together all along here here is I have my uh, my blocks so these blocks tell me what height my gunnels will come in so my gun wheel frame which the next step will be to take out the building frame and put in my actual gunnel frame which is bigger. That's why I have a little bit of an angle going outwards with my bark so that my my gunwheel frame will be able to fit in. But these blocks tell me which height. So in the middle I'm thinking 9 inches and then to the next thwart it'll be 10 inches and at the ends it'll be 11 inches. So that gives me, I put them all along, so that gives me an idea of the height at which my side panels or my bark has to come up. So you can see here, I'm good, but this, if I want this to come 10 inches, I'll be missing a little bit of winter bark here. So I think at this end, which is the smaller end of the tree, where the bark is smaller, because it's the higher 
like 15 feet up in the air. So this here, I'll have to add another, probably, I'll put longer than last to be safe, but I'll go another 18 inches of bark and then I can trim off excess when I put in my, my thing. But I'll need to uh, sew in for sure this whole length of winter bark. So I'll, uh, first thing is first, I'll sew that in. And then uh, I'll look at adding, like I said, probably another 18 inches, sew a piece of it, stitch a piece of it, and then remove the building frame, put in the, the, the gunwale frame, and then go from there. So, awesome. Actually, maybe I'll just, uh, I'll just sew these two panels in with the double harness stitch and then I'll remove that's all I'll do yeah I'll remove the building frame the small frame at the bottom and I'll put in my gut wheel frame in right away and then before doing anything else then I'm gonna see exactly where it comes and then I'll know exactly where I need to add stuff but this gives me a general idea anyways so
doing some pretty good progress on the stitching with the spruce roots. I had a bunch of spruce roots ready to go for my last canoe build, so I didn't have to go out and gather some. So once I'm done doing these two main winter panels, I can take my uh, my building frame under uh, outside out of it, and then I'm gonna actually put my real gunwheel frame that I pre-built. So I did a video this winter kind of on that. But uh, yeah, so I want to secure these winter bark panels, and then once I have my uh oh, see I talk and then I break something. But this root, so with these roots, you really got to pull on them hard to get them tight. But if they break, that means they had a, a weakness anyways. So now I just got to back up a few stitches and secure it. So the trick with these roots that I'm finding that's going quicker is uh, you got to make sure you prepare it first. So split it down and then have it as much equal as possible, the right size. And then that way you can just stitch and it goes quick. Because if your root's not nice, then you're kind of screwed. This is my root stash. one's pretty nice pretty much ready to go sweet I don't soak them all right away because when they uh, stay in the water too long they get black and ugly so I keep some dry and then when I'm within a day or two of using them then I'll uh, I'll soak them Yeah, so to start these, these stitches, you put it in the hole and then you make sure each end's equal. So you put it right in the middle. That way you have equal length of stitch to work with on both, both ends. So. Time consuming for sure. And you can hear that, love that sound. Not a mosquitoes, but love the sound of bark and root coming in tight. You hear that sound? Love it. This sound. Also goes pretty quick when you have a bunch of holes done in advance so you don't have to switch positions or tools for every hole. So I'll do them. I'm going for about maybe three quarters of an inch or an inch in between each hole. Maybe not quite an inch, maybe, yeah, three quarters. Yeah, it took me about a week to do my lashings, but 
I only did, took about four or five hours each side. I put my uh, other video up last week. I'm gonna try to put videos every Friday so you don't really have an idea how much progress I do every week. The last video series I did, I, uh, I put out the series in September, so I had a bunch of videos kind of pre-made. But on this one, I'm really gonna try to put videos out as I go. Hopefully, the canoe is a success and doesn't break or explode. But. four or five in advance. See what I'm doing, like when you see me pull like this, so I have my other hand on the other side and so I can support both my hands and I have the bark in between and then just pry it with my little, have it here and then just pry and then that comes and tightens it really good because the bark is, it's loose, say it's not supported on anything so you can't just pull on it, you gotta have an anchor point. <laughs> See that went pretty quick, the four holes done. This thing's still recording. Yep. a bit of water on it from my my pot I got water in here so I can soak soak the root a bit
This side, it's just tied off. Just going to make sure I scrape off some moss and some little pieces of bark that are sticking out because I'm going to be ready to remove this and put my gun frame in. It's going to come and sit right here, so I'm going to prepare the bark for it. bigger big step oh, I'm gonna find a place in my little garage to put it there's my bark envelope um I marked the centers with that red a red mark there that's the center and then I put a mark red mark on this side too to mark the center Okay, I'm gonna just broom this out and then we'll be ready to put the gun wheel frame in. uprights to have room for the other frame to come in. Just gonna back them off for now and then once my my, my frame's in I'll be able to reposition them. First. 
Okay, so this is my my center thwart. So these blocks, I'm aiming nine inches. So right now it's just sitting on these two blocks. So I gotta make sure I'm really centered um, like this way and then as well left and right. So just gonna try to, you kinda gotta eyeball it. Alright, I got all my blocks in position, so I got two per thwart, a 9 inch block, 9 inch block, 10 inch block, 10 inch block, 11 inch block, 11 inch block. Same thing on that side. So now, now I just gotta put some battens, so some 2x4s. And put a little bit of weight, not too much, just so my frame is in contact with all the blocks. And I gotta double check that everything is centered. How does that look? Does it look centered? Just trying to eyeball it. Alrighty boys and girls, so I got the frame in the right position. My issue right now is I'm kind of running out of longer 2x4, so I need some to come here. Because um, it is a bigger canoe, so you need long pieces to come from, you know, one port to the other one. Um, so anyways, I'm going to search for whatever I can find for for 2x4s, and then uh, I'll add some more weight. But I put a little bit of rocks, so I got contact with a few, a few of my blocks. And what's nice is my frame, my gunwale frame that I just put in, I had already uh, bent it. So I had already given it a certain curvature when I, uh, when I kind of created it. So I already got what I was looking for. So nine in the center, 10 at the other thwarts, and then 11 at the, the end, thwart, end thwarts. And uh, I got enough bark on each side, so my measurements are all fitting, everything's coming together nicely. So, uh, yeah. Now I can see now where I need to add more winter bark, so I'll need about a foot and a half of more winter bark on this end, and then that end I'll need probably one more, one more foot. So I'll be working on that. Awesome. Yeah, so this is what I mean here by where I'm missing winter bark. So I need another panel to come up here to hide, hide my gunwheel frame. So the winter bark has to come all the way here like that. And then same thing on that side. I'll need winter bark to come up here. Winter bark come here up and then here I'm good